Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Uh, let me introduce myself first. My name is Laksmita, and I'm from Sanata Dharma University. And my name is Thomas. I'm from Sanata Dharma University as well. So uh, both Thomas and I, we're going to share to you about what we did um, a few months ago in our class, in one of our activities in our class, which is uh, using virtual book club. So the title of our presentation is Let's Talk About Sadness, Lessons from the Virtual Book Club Activity. Um, this is what we had uh, in 2019 uh, before uh, the pandemic, right? So in 2019 and prior years, when we do book clubs, we do it like this, uh, physical uh, book club. So we go to uh, one of the classes and then we have literature circles we discuss in the classrooms or the students will be asked to go to one of the rooms which we call with uh, era corner where we have graded readers at, from all levels and they would read books there and we discuss books there as well but that was then and this is now now is um, where we are not supposed to have um, physical meetings with uh, the students or among the students because of this uh, COVID-19 situation. So as you can see, the campus is empty, the classroom is empty as well. And the classroom that we now know is in the form of virtual. We use Zoom meetings and a lot of the activities or almost all of our activities are done virtually like this. So we try to uh, say that, you know, starting March 2020, the abrupt changes from the offline setting to the online setting due to COVID-19 and due the, to the health protocols and due to the situation, the chaotic situation, of course, every one of us uh, are experiencing disruption. We experience anger, chaos, confusion, and fear. So basically our lifestyle and mindset is disrupted. Things that we usually know is no longer, uh, can no longer be done. It's alien right now. And everyone is struggling to survive the chaos. So uh, based on the situation with the abrupt changes, uh, what are the effects, uh, particularly here in Yogyakarta, Indonesia, or in general in Indonesia? Um, the effects is uh, definitely severe. Of course, all over the world are experiencing the same thing, but uh, this is uh, focusing on what's going on in, in Indonesia. So Ritwan Kamil, one of the government uh, people, said that you know, one of the biggest impacts or effects of COVID-19 is the psychological condition of the people. Uh, from all ages, from all uh, races. And uh, regardless whether you're rich or poor, you experience the psychological impacts. Uh, why? Because there are still uncertainties. Uh, please can keep in mind this was written in 2020 in October. So uh, maybe like four months after the health protocol. So um, a lot of the situation were uncertain. At that time, vaccines were not yet created or still in the process of being created. Um, we have social issues, job problems. A lot of people were jobless suddenly and deaths, of course, happened uh, on a daily basis. So, you know, the psychological condition should not be taken lightly. That's what Ridwan Kamil said. So what's going on in the field of education, of course, the students are also heavily impacted by this situation. Uh, in 2021, there has, been, or starting in 2020, there have been a lot of research related to the mental health issues uh, on the student's condition. And a, a lot of the research and some of the research that I mentioned here are basically talking about the same thing. It's that the students are heavily affected by this condition because they no longer have social life. They could not go out with their friends. 
they could not hang out with their friends, they could not meet with their teachers or lecturers. So their lifestyle is suddenly being caged into their room or into their houses. So uh, mental health issues among the youth is very uh, severe and it should not be taken into lightly. So um, because of this condition, uh, so one of the experts in psychiatry, uh, which is Nofa Rianti Yusuf, the head of the Indonesian Psychiatrist Association in Indonesia, um, she said that we, in the education world, we should not ignore this situation. We should uh, embrace the fact that the students are struggling psychologically and that uh, the school should do something about this. At least uh, the school should provide a means to help the students cope with the new era, with the new normal, in this case, from offline to online setting and not being able to meet with friends and physically in, in a place. So uh, she mentioned that, you know, it's better if the, the school should implement 5T, which is talking, training, teaching, tools, and taking care. And these 5T are uh, right now have been applied in many schools in Indonesia because a lot of the schools are uh, realizing the fact that psychological conditions should not be uh, put aside. So uh, in this case, uh, we would like to emphasize that, you know, in order for us to help the students, the school administrator, the teachers, or the lecturers, they should uh, work hand in hand to ensure the students' well-being. And we need to provide more methods. We need to find more techniques in teaching to make sure that we don't only teach them the knowledge or the skills of the language, but we should also um, provide the students the opportunity to express their feelings. So that's why we thought of using virtual book club. Now, uh, before we go on to the activity, I'd like to share to you about some of the uh, underlining theories of this research. So let's start from the learning part. Uh, there are some um, points that I'd like to put out here. So according to Vail, learning is something very obtrusive. It's novel, it's messy, and it's something that we can't really predict in the future. What we learn right now might be different tomorrow and next week. And this is what's going on on March 2020. One day we can still meet together in campus, in school, hang out with friends. And then the next day, you're not supposed to meet anyone else. Uh, you have to stay in your room. You have to stay in your houses. So that's something that uh, they, uh, we experience the disruptions. And also another um, statement here, it says that um, choosing what to learn and the meaning of incoming information is three, uh, seen through the lens of a shifting reality. So similar to veil, vale, and everything can change suddenly. And what is happening in the future can be very novel, just like what we experience as well. And um, this goes to show that uh, learning is dynamic. Because of this dynamic situation and because of the dynamicity of the learning process, uh, we need to make sure that the students are well equipped in handling these uh, disruptions, in handling these uh, sudden changes of the learning process. Now, how do we do that? So we try to use literature to help the students to overcome these challenges. And because in literature, uh, we can really dig out the emotion, the emotional part where the students can really discuss about their feelings with, uh, with the help of stories uh, or books. And in this case, we use a picture book to help them to uh, share their uh, condition and their feelings in the virtual book club. So that's literature and emotion, but what's the connection with the virtual book club? 
So in this case, uh, we tried to share to you some of the theories that we believe can help under help you understand better. So all of these um, statements, the first four statements, uh, they talk about the importance of books and how books are in this particular part, books that are based on real life situations can help the students to uh, share their feelings and thoughts about what they really feel at the moment. And uh, the last um, description there, it talks about even though it's an online forum, um, virtual book club can actually be a way or a means for the students to uh, share their thoughts freely and without any um, you know, burdens to share their feelings. So based on this, um, these theories, uh, we came to a conclusion to find a new technique uh, in our class. We haven't done this before because we never thought that we would do virtual book club. So uh, before we chose the book, we asked the students about their reading habit. And as you can see, 50% of the students uh, from 142 students, 50% said that they're accustomed to reading books, be it in Indonesian or English or any other languages, but they read books. So they, uh, they don't really have any difficulties reading books. 39% said, you know, well, they sometimes read books, but uh, lately they don't want to read books because it's kind of boring. And 11% said that they don't like books, they don't like reading. So to cater all of these differences, we try to find a picture book, which is entitled Sad Book. In this case, um, it's written by Michael Rosen and Quentin Blake is the illustrator. So uh, this book is talking about uh, Michael Rosen's personal life of losing his son uh, Eddie, and this is based on the real life situation which happened to Michael Rosen. And um, again, the, the underlying theories that we mentioned earlier on, and also based on our preliminary uh, studies or analysis uh, to the students, uh, we came up with trying to use this book. So uh, Thomas later will talk about uh, the activity that we did in our virtual book club. Thomas? Thank you, Vita. So here are what we did for the virtual book club. Uh, there are 142 students from page 2020 that become the participants of this virtual book club. Prior to the virtual book club, we asked the students to read the questions so that in the discussion they, they are they were more prepared and on the three day volunteers led the discussion in the group of 10 to 15 students we also use random wheel to generate the questions so we prepare those questions before and they have the students have answered the questions and they just cut the questions from the random wheel and after that the students discuss the questions and anyone could add their experiences or stories to the students answers so basically it is a kind of like discussion forum based on this uh, explanation i do believe you can imagine or you can uh, have some expectation on the students responses well we choose uh, some of the students responses and as you can see here we have the students and they look so happy here. This is actually after the virtual book club. They look happy, sincerely. <laughs> and here are the students' responses. Based on their answers, we could say that actually most of the students like the virtual book club. As you can see, 78% of the students enjoyed the activity while the rest of them are somehow neutral. Well, they neither like or dislike the, act the activity, actually. To see how our participants responded, we selected some samples of students' responses. 
as you all can see from these excerpts, students emphasize how PBC helped them enjoy reading better. And they mentioned that the reading was very relevant to them and this activity gave them the chances to share some opinions, even got some more inspirations from other students. One student even said that this activity can encourage those who were not into reading to read more. Now, let's see the students who said neutral. From their excerpts, we can conclude that the main problem is actually in the mode that the virtual book club, because they used to or prefer physical books and face-to-face -face activity due to some reasons they mentioned in their excerpts here. So, which part of the PBC did they like? As what I've mentioned before, the sharing and discussion contributed to the students' enjoyment uh, of especially joining the VPC. Then they also found new reading strategy, especially when they could share what they read. One student even mentioned that this was her first time sharing what she read in her whole life. Can you imagine that? And after understanding students' responses, now we will try to see how PPC help participants express their personal views of sadness. And especially would like to answer our second research questions. How does the virtual book club activity help the participants in expressing their personal views on sadness? Personally, we analyze the values they learn from said book. The book shall give them a new perspective. Sadness is part of our lives and it is okay to be sad. The acceptance of sadness is somehow uncommon thing to be said or taught in Indonesia, especially for students at their age. Well, they tended to keep the sadness to themselves. Some participants actually learned that they need to move on from their sadness and should not wallow in sadness. Some excerpts here show how participants perceive sadness from the book. One interesting finding is a student who directly quoted what the main character said here. Well, she said, sometimes I'm sad, but I don't know why. I don't want to talk with other people. I just want to think about it on my own because it is mine. Maybe it is because things now are not like the way they were a few years ago. Secondly, we analyzed the values students learned after the sharing session. There are several themes here, such as they need to be more open, sharing when you are sad, sharing will help, accepting sadness in our lives, and seeing things from different perspectives. One student reflection even told us what we lack. It is the willingness to listen. Well, it can be our reflection as well from what the students have said here. Based on the students' responses, we learned a lot of things. So what did we learn? First, sharing is a matter of preference. It depends on students' personality and also life values. Some students might prefer to share, well, some of them, no, they will say no if they were asked to share. And some of them are waiting for the right persons who are willing to listen to them. Second, students learned different ways to respond uh, to their friends' expressions or feelings on sadness. They saw how their friends shared and also expressed their sadness through their narrative. While some students might just listen and not give any comments, but they surely learned 
how to give appropriate responses. And third, students learned to use empathy towards their friends' struggles because they once again listen to their friends' sadness. And the last one, students are becoming more aware of their personal struggles or feelings on sadness. I personally think this is the most important thing they learned. Accepting the fact that they are sad and they need someone to listen will save them from psychological problem, especially during this pandemic. So on that note, uh, of course, as lecturers or as educators, we need to also uh, make some reflective moment on this, uh, whether virtual book club is effective or not, uh, whether the students are um, enjoying the process or not. So what did we learn? Uh, in this case, we learned some things. Uh, of course, there are still a lot of things that we cannot put here, but these are some of the important things that we'd like to share to you. Uh, we agree with what Becker and Richmond said in that you know, it's very important to always pay attention and foster to, uh, the, to foster empathy among the students. And we can use literature uh, to foster empathy. And of course, in this situation, empathy is one of the most important things that we should have in our lives because we are in this together and we try to tell our students that, you know, it's okay to share your sadness, your thoughts and feelings because there will be no prejudice uh, behind it. Uh, and it's what's more important is to move on from this situation and try to find the uh, light at the end of the tunnel. So um, Becker and Richmond really emphasized the fact that we should never ignore the mental illness or the mental condition of our students. So even if we teach them the knowledge of the language, the language skills, the elements, uh, which are definitely important, but we should never ignore the, the humanistic side of learning. So even though um, we're using online platforms, uh, we should never be blinded with technology. And we need to make sure that we need to uh, uh, use technology wisely because as human beings, uh, technology, is important, but what's more important is the human interaction. And virtual book club can be one of the means to do that. And of course, this is a preliminary study. Um, we will do more research on this. Uh, we, we will try in different classes with different books. And um, for now, we cannot say that it has worked, but we can say that it's beginning to work uh, because us, uh, the lecturers, we still need to uh, learn more about how to manage virtual book clubs. And on that note, uh, we would like to end our presentation with uh, Dr. Kate Siner's uh, um, quote. Uh, she said that if you're feeling sad, the most important thing you can do is give yourself the space to feel that way. Then after that, get up and get moving. So this, um, this spirit of get up and get moving can be achieved if we in the school system or in our classes, we provide that space for the students to um, express their opinions and try to formulate their struggles and try to find the, and the light of the end of the tunnel and so that they can get up and get moving. So on that note, uh, we do hope that um, this can be inspirational or maybe if you have more ideas related to virtual book clubs, we are very open for uh, comments and suggestions. Thank you very much. Have a good day.